Hi, welcome back everybody, me Robert here and in this video I will show you how to make HTTP POST requests to external REST APIs with ABAP. Those of you who are watching my channel on a regular basis already know that this requires an SCP communication arrangement when the REST API requires authorization. Since I've made several videos about how to set up an SCP communication arrangement, I will not cover this in this video. However, feel free to watch my previous videos on this topic. In this video, I will focus on the ABAP code that we need to post form data to an external REST API. Specifically, I will post the value added text number of SAP to Global Text as a Service, which is our REST API in the Google Cloud, and it will tell us whether the value added text number is valid or not. So if you like this content, consider giving a like and subscribe so you guys can keep up to date with all of our videos. Additionally, you now have the possibility to become a member of this channel by clicking the join button below and to get early responses to your comments and other perks. But now without further ado, let's get to it! Alright, as always, I will show you this live in the system. As you can see, I've opened already Eclipse, which is the code editor for ABAP. I've opened four tabs here. The first one is the global text usage samples. The second one is the global text client. The third one is the global text validation. And the fourth one is the communication handler. In the global text usage samples, which is the first tab, I first create the form data and store it in a structure named valid text ID query. In the country property, I store DE, the string DE, which is the country code of Germany. And in the property text ID, I store this string here, which is the value added text number of SAP. Then I scroll down to the function validate text IDs here. And in this method, I call the validate EU what number method in the global text client, which you will see in the second tab here a little bit later. This method validate EU what number takes the valid text ID query as argument. And this basically is the form data that I previously showed you. This function returns us a JSON string which I output in the next line here. However, this JSON response string contains a lot more of information that I currently need. So additionally, I use JSON path to get just the property validation result here in this line. So I will show you how I implemented this in detail in a second, but now let's press F9 to see the results. So as you can see, this outputted this JSON string here, and it contains a property named validation result. And this validation result is valid. So basically this tells us that we have posted a valid value added text number. And here in the last line, you can see that JSON path has extracted just this valid string for us from the complete JSON string. So if you're also interested in JSON path, then please watch uh, my video, Let's Build ABAP JSON Path or get our product in the link below. Now let's look into the details how we implemented this. First, we look into the GTEx client and here we find the validate EU what number method again, but this time in the object GTEx validation. The class of this object we find in the third tab here. And here we find the implementation of the method validate EU what number. In this method, I use the object communication handler that I've built in the video how to make HTTP requests with ABAP. This communication handler does the whole communication with the SAP communication arrangement. 
However, I will not cover this in this video since I covered it already in the mentioned video. So please feel free to watch this video uh, as well. However, in the meanwhile, I have improved this class a little bit uh, with the method init HTTP by arrangement, which gives us um, the HTTP request object and the HTTP client object. You can get the full code to our communication handler in the link below. And here you can see that I use the HTTP request in the communication handler that we received by calling this method. And inside this HTTP request object, I call the method setHeaderField. With this method, you can pass all header fields to the header that you need. In our case, we set the content type to application xwww form URL encoded. And we set the accept header to accept application JSON. Please note that you find some headers in the interface if web HTTP header. However, not all supported content types are listed in this interface. Therefore, we have to pass this content type manually, as you can see here. Next, we set the form fields in the HTTP request object. As with the header fields, these are name value pairs here as well. And we pass the name country with the value country, which was the country code for Germany in our example, and the name text ID with the value of text ID, which was the value of the text number of SAP in our example. Eventually, we call the execute method in the HTTP client that is part of our communication handler. We receive the HTTP client object like the HTTP request object by calling the method init HTTP by arrangement. Finally, we call the getText method in the HTTP response object that we retrieved as a result of the execute method. This gives us the JSON string as response. So basically that's all. But if you're interested, we can do a quick look into the init HTTP by arrangement method of our communication handler. This one is located here in the fourth tab. And here you can see that I further split the whole communication arrangement logic into further methods named getcom arrangement, which basically gets the communication arrangement and get test by com arrangement, which basically gets the HTTP destination. But from a functional perspective, this is nothing new since we covered this in the video I mentioned earlier. Here you can see that we expose the HTTP client object as well as the HTTP request object with the communication handler. And these are both public variables in the communication handler class. So if we scroll up to the beginning of the communication handler class, we can see here the HTTP client, which is a type ref to the interface IF web HTTP client and the HTTP request object that is a type ref to the interface IF web HTTP request. And since these are public objects, this is the reason why we can access them here in the GTEx validation class. As you've seen here, the HTTP request object can be accessed through the communication handler class, the communication handler object, as well as the HTTP client uh, object can be accessed through the communication handler class and object here as well. So that's basically all I wanted to show you today. So if you like this content, please click the like button, the subscribe button, and also the notification bell below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.